Hello and good Tag to Warthan I was Lord Stahlhagel. Um, during the holidays I have enough time to do another historical channel update and this time for the M3 Elite tank. Um, for, for my opinion it's a kind of interesting machine because it has a kind of awkward design and uh, it comes with a new update and I think it's pretty interesting for you too guys. The M3 Elite is in the American research tree right now and due to the better ranking of 2.3, it will encounter the Panther 3, the early Panther 4 equivalents in the game, which is kind of historically accurate, I think. Um, despite the fact that it never encountered any Russian tanks in real battle, it will have to stand its ground against the early T-34 variant, the T-28 and the T-50s. Especially the T-34 is a hot nut to crack for the M3's armament um, due to the nice sloped armor layout of the T-34, but now to the historical facts. The medium tank M3 was an American tank which only was used during World War II. The British forces also used this tank, but it was called by two different names based on the turret configuration. Um, tanks employing the US turrets were called the General Lee tank, and the tanks with the British turrets were called the General Grant. And this Grant tank is also available in the game but here is a premium tank. You can have a look at this at the research tree at the American tree. Um, now to the development of this machine. The Panther 3 and the Panther 4 success in the French campaign led the US Army to immediately order a new medium tank armed with a 75mm gun or especially a high caliber gun in a rotating turret. This would be the M4 Sherman intentionally um, and until the Germans was in production already and uh, a quick interim solution or interim design with the 75mm gun was urgently needed and the M3 was a compromise to produce a tank as soon as possible by accepting all the flaws like a whole mounted main gun for example. A fun fact by the side, the whole mounted gun to the right, the 75mm gun to the right um, was necessary because at this time the American tank plants were incapable of casting a turret big enough to take a high caliber or a 75mm main gun um, due to the poor development of the American industry during the interwar years. And um, it was kind of an, a result um, of this poor development and they leave, they limp behind the German and especially the Russian productions for years I would guess. Uh, let's have a look at the combat history of the M3 tank. Um, the US produced kind of, I would say, around about 6000 M3s. And um, they not only used it by themselves, they um, shipped it via land and lease to the Soviets and the British Army. Um, and of these around about 6000 M3s that were produced, um, the land and lease contract uh, made it possible to ship more than two and a half thousand M3s um, as a supply to the British Army and around about one and a half thousand to the Soviet Union. So the M3s medium tanks first action in the war was during the North African campaign. British lease and Grant's first action um, were against the Africa Corps at the Battle of I would say it was Gazala or Gazala, I don't know who, how it's spelled or how it's said correctly, um, on May the 27th in 1942. Um, their appearance on the battlefield was a big surprise to the Germans because they were used to the um, Crusader tanks of the Brits and they were pretty unprepared for the M3's high caliber 75mm gun because it has it had a higher effective range than their um, 50 mm main anti-tank gun by this time. Only if a few tanks were capable of destroying uh, the M3 um, in, in a safe range. For example the Italian Semoventi da 75-18. Um, it was an, an, a propelled gun, a self-propelled gun. Um, which was able to destroy the M3 within secure range by using heat rounds. Um, so the Grands and the Lees served in North African theater until the end of the campaign. 
and um, the M3 was generally appreciated during the North African campaign for its very high mechanical reliability, the good armor protection for this time, and especially the heavy firepower with the higher caliber 75mm main armament gun um, to the side in the hull of this machine. If you're interested in war games overall, and not only in multiplayer or arcade tank battle action, I can recommend you the game Theater of War 2, where this tank here shines. Um, in the Theater of War 2 game, um, the African campaign is simulated, and you can choose the Americans, the British, or even the German Africa Corps. And um, the M3 lead there will encounter the first German tanks, the Panther 2 and the Panther 3, and some early variants of the Panther 4. And this tank really can shine against these tanks. When you have your M3 Lee equipped it, um, you can see that not many tanks, especially the German tanks, can um, penetrate this, this uh, tank because the armor is kind of thick for this area and especially the sloping on the hull is pretty good for this time. Nevertheless, um, among the problems that were experienced was that the tall silhouette and the low hull mounted 75mm main gun were tactical drawbacks since they prevented the tank from fighting from uh, hull down firing positions and especially here in the game I think most people will have problems with this tank because you have to aim a little bit to the side because the, the, the sides of this tank are focused on the um, uh, 37mm gun so you have to imagine that um, your hull mounted gun is a little bit a half or one meter to the side so you have to aim a little bit to the side and even higher because the muzzle velocity is pretty much slower as the 37mm uh, uh, gun. And this makes firing especially hard for um, unexperienced players and that's what this machine will face. They will, it will face a lot of unexperienced players because it's pretty low in the battle ranking. In real life there were some other drawbacks. Um, for example, the use of the riveted hull superstructure armor on the early versions led to a problem whereby the impact of the enemy shells, for example the 50mm um, shell of the Panzer III, would cause the rivets to break off the armor and become a projectile itself inside the tank. So even though no armor pen penetration happened, the rivet itself became projectiles and maybe killed the crew inside. Um, it was solved a little bit later. The later models were built with the all welded armor to eliminate this problem. Um, all these problems had a big impact, for example, or especially at the Eastern Front in Europe. As I said before, the M3 Lee was exported or uh, supplied via land and lease to the Red Army Corps, and um, the M3 was very, very unpopular in the Red Army. Um, because it already had the more modern and, and pretty much advanced T-34. Um, the faults of the M3 Lee showed up in engagements against the most advanced German armor and anti-tank weapons for this time, which were preferred to be used at the Eastern Front um, for the first time, so they can counter the very good Russian armor layout. How popular the M3 was can be seen in which nickname the Soviets gave the M3, it was called the Six-Man Grave. Um, despite all the drawbacks, the Soviets still used the M3 in the Arctic Front at Norway and Finland in October 1944. The, the Germans and the Allies there, the Finns and the Norwegians, were mostly using captured tanks, for example the Hotchkiss H-35 and the Somua S-35 tanks. So, in this setting, the M3 Lee was clearly the superior machine and armored fighting vehicle and, and gained superior fire positions on the battlefield, so it was clear that the use there would be a good use, and so they did it. Another good example for the use of the M3 Lee in the later war years or um, in a theater where it can shine was the China Burma India Theater, or shortly the CBI Theater where the M3 Lee played an outstanding role. Um, declared obsolete in April 1944, the British General Lee tanks fought uh, on against Japan until the end of the war. In the end, the M3 Lee, or the M3 General Grant, 
In the China Burma India Theatre performed the mission its original designers had it intended to do, um, that of supporting the infantry by heavy fire support. And this supporting role can still be seen here in the game when you look at the layout itself. Um, if you're in the garage and look at the tank, you will see a lot of um, machine guns on the tank and a low velocity high caliber gun. So all these facts um, yeah, were, were clear that this tank was used or was designed to support the infantry by, um, by fighting infantry in buildings for example or even uh, at open ground with a huge amount of machine guns on this tank. So as an overall conclusion the M3 Lee was able to get along at the battlefield of 1942 when it was deployed and uh, where it was designed for. Its armor and firepower was equal or sometimes even superior to most of the opponents it faced, um, especially in the Pacific theater. Long range and high velocity guns were not yet common on uh, some German tanks at the European theater, so this tank um, might have seen a good use in the, in the first uh, years of theater there too. But if we look at the rapid pace of tank development by the Germans and Russians, pushing each other to even higher and higher limits meant um, that the M3 Lee was very quickly outclassed in Europe. Um, by the mid of 1942, with the introduction of the German Tigers, for example, um, the upgunning or the upgrading of the Panther Force to a long barrel 75mm gun, and um, further in 1943, when the appearance of the Panthers um, took place, the M3 had no chance on the battlefield anymore, and it was um, not used anymore on the battlefield. Along with the large numbers availability of the German tanks, the M3 Lee was withdrawn from service um, then uh, in the European theater, but in the Pacific theater itself till the end of the war. Um, that's it for the background, historical background of the M3 Lee or M3 Grand Tank. I hope it was uh, fun and informative at the same time. Um, I will see you on the battlefield the next time. I hope you do your best. So, bye!